association has born uh, just by chance of people who like music, uh, and Karim was one of the components. My task for the association, I'm the vice chair, chairman, and uh, I, I'm responsible for the logistics. So uh, accommodation, uh, how uh, the participation will have to come here. So I send them all the connections with the train, shuttle buses, air, airports, and so on. I'm staying in the Bella di Bosque, which is a perfect, uh, I would say, farmer house. Uh, in the top of the Smarano uh, village and um, they received us very well so it's amazing how uh, also combined with the academy we have great conditions to stay. Well I'm not the, I'm not the guy to say about themes I'm just a manager who's trying to organize the whole thing to, to, to work. We have excellent uh, musicians which are dealing with the scientific uh, scientific side of the academy and therefore uh, I'm better off talking about the ambiance, about uh, the climate, about the people, about everything, but not, don't ask me for music. One of the most important things with the Smarano Academy is that we, we, um, we plan the academy according to uh, a general theme and uh, then we try to work as a team so when we are teaching, we try to attend each other's classes so we can relate to the general theme. The theme is quite a complicated theme because the title is From Mode to Key. Uh, just to speak about the development of the music between 17th and 18th century and the creation, slowly creation, invention of the modern key, major and minor key. This is the uh, instrument we'll be spending our time together most. A pedal clavichord with two individual manuals and a pedal instrument as well. The pedal clavichord is a very nice instrument because it's like a teacher. It's really critical when you do something wrong, when the attack of the keys, for instance, is not OK, then you really get a very bad sound. And so it, it teaches you how to do it. This morning I attended uh, Joel Spears' class uh, referring to trio and trio playing and the idea of being three musicians at the same time. We've been looking at uh, um, strategies for surviving box trio sonatas. They're some of the hardest liturgy that, li literature that we have to deal with. So we've been looking at different ways to, to tackle learning the trio sonatas. One of the fun parts has been to to divide the group into uh, teams of three that play trio sonatas together. We have a two manual pedal clavichord here at Smarano, so it's very easy to take one of the manuals out and put it on a, a table next to the instrument. And we have three people playing what uh, normally one person is asked to play. A normal day in Smarano for the student is very hard work, but it's good. So you'll have classes, usually we have classes in the morning, We've been having from 8.45 in the morning through to 1 p.m., three different classes. And then we have practice time in the afternoon that's scheduled for us, usually three or four hours scheduled. And then we have another class in the later afternoon for an hour, hour and a half, then dinner and then a concert. Of course, the highlights of this academy were the concerts. So we heard the first night a beautiful concert from Umberto Forni. It's really interesting because those Italian teachers have really the kind of Italian spirit, also the Italian language, and uh, there seems to be a relation between the real Italian 
music and the Italian spirit. I find that uh, Italian music is uh, not enough uh, well known and considered. Uh, most of the organ students around the world perform mostly German music, which is of course very important. But uh, they would uh, need to understand that everything they play in, as German repertoire uh, was born in Italy in the 16th century but already with an uh, uh, extremely high level of composition, inspiration, and uh, this uh, is very important for our um, knowledge of organ music. Last year we were in uh, Denmark. This year we decided to go to Bologna for one day. The Academy has often tried to spend one or two days someplace else other than Smirano. We've been to Mantua and we've been to Milan and, and Rome and we even went to Norway once for a few days. But uh, in Bologna there are two uh, spectacular instruments in San Petronio. Uh, San Petronio is uh, the second largest church of Italy, uh, uh, second only to St. Peter's. And uh, it's an important basilica, as we say. Basilica is an important name. It's not like a cathedral. It's more than a cathedral. It's recognized to be a special place. Like that section there. It used to be. Like it, but to be. why did it disappear? There are two fantastic, old, very well preserved uh, organs facing each other in the choir. It's the earliest one is from 1476. It was rebuilt in 1530, uh, actually 1531. They were hoping to have it built, rebuilt in 1530 for the crowning of Emperor Charles V, the Holy Roman Emperor. Uh, it was a, a moment where uh, we really felt connected to history. So the day was that we, uh, we arrived in the church and there was an explanation by Lieben Tamminga, the organist of the church. And he told us about the history, he told the students about the history, he demonstrated the different voices. Uh, not a complete ripieno with the front pipes, so 24 foot, and duodecima, which is the principal. It was a fantastic experience to both see and uh, listen to and play uh, the organs of um, Santa Petronia Basilica. We had uh, an earthquake uh, a few weeks ago here and the Bologna uh, Basilica was uh, impartially damaged and we could not really have a, a public, a public uh, concert uh, as we wanted to make. So we had the privilege to be alone in the cathedral using the organ and, and listening to a private concert which was, was held by our teachers. And it was a great privilege that uh, none of the inhabitants of Bologna ever had in its life. After lunch, we, did, we visited the very famous a new museum uh, which hosts the um, music instrument collection of Luigi Tagliavini. So he had more than 90 historical keyboard instruments in his collection. The earliest one was from 1540. A bank in Bologna has paid not only to open this museum, but to restore uh, one of the famous oratories in, in Bologna, uh, the Oratory of St. Colombo. So when you go to visit the museum, it's not just the beautiful instruments you get to see, but all of the Renaissance frescoes that were in this, uh, in this oratory. Um, have been really lovingly restored. It's a, it's, it's a very uh, special experience to come and visit this museum. We always for, uh, forget that the organ music was born in Italy and then migrated north and therefore uh, the roots are still here.
Well, now we've discussed uh, a lot of the early repertoire, early uh, 17th, 16th century Italian music. And coming days we will discuss uh, the German music from the 17th and 18th century, Georg Böhm and Johann Sebastian Bach. The Dilus Fantasticus has many roots in the Italian music, as we have seen yesterday. The theme of my master class is uh, Italian influence in the organ music of Dietrich Buxtehude. There was lots of Italian influence in the North German repertoire. I have to play from here to there avec discretion. Or in Italian, what do you find with this piece? Con discretion. The level of the students is very high and we're really excited to have such a great group. It is the level of the, the average, uh, I would say, music instrument on an, on an institution like a conservatorium. We basically have around 30 hours to, to practice here, uh, divided to clavichords with pedal, organs, um, clavichords, apsichords. They're encouraged to ask if they want private coaching, any of the teachers who are here to, to, to uh, come and work with them individually. Um, as many times as, as they want. Joe Spierstas' qualities are that he, he plays an interesting role in the whole team of the teachers because his speciality is uh, the clavichord. And the clavichord is very important for the education of organists because there is a very strong relation between the clavichord technique and the organ technique. Now, Joel is also well informed about the organ technique, so he is a, he is a, um, yeah, a very important uh, part of the chain between the various keyboard uh, instruments. Tonight we have the final concert, so-called final concert, with all the participants. Not everybody will play, but uh, many of them. Yeah, we have to see if I'm going to be involved, but I would like to, and it's a decision of the teachers, of course. We're going to use the pedal clavichord to present one of Bach's trios. Uh, the uh, number six in G major. We'll have nine people playing this trio, so three groups of three uh, that have prepared one of the movements apiece. So that'll uh, be quite an ensemble performance. Afterwards, we have a big dinner all together and uh, we will um, also give the certification to everybody. Muito obrigado. Uh, de nada. De nada. <laughs> One of the things that's very nice is that you have a lot of contact time with the teachers, um, both formally in classes, but also at meal times and while you're practicing, you meet them in the corridors. So it gives you a chance to carry on conversations that you've started in class. Um, I also appreciate that everybody here is very friendly, and this was my experience three years ago as well. <laughs> and next year we come back as an active student. Okay? We are teaching music, but we are also teaching life, because uh, every group of students in every academy, at the end 
of the school have uh, are becoming an excellent, nice group of friends, which uh, after the academy maintain their ties, maintain their connections, and therefore we are also happy to generate this kind of uh, friendship uh, between our students too.